Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today we're looking at Testament, the newest game from Jap Anime Games. This is one that I previewed during the Kickstarter, and they were nice enough to send me a official production copy. So we're going to take it for a spin, and back when I played it on the Kickstarter, I played the tutorial boss. This is a game where things get very tough very quickly, kind of like a rogue-like adventure combat game. So I'm going against Stage 2's boss, the Storm Causer, giant blue whale of death here it looks like. And we're going to see how we do. And I'm going to do my normal thing, go through the overview of how the game plays, and then do a full playthrough. And if you want to see my thoughts on the game, check out the separate review video. And don't forget, we use timestamps and chapters for all of that. So if you want to skip to something specific, feel free. And if you like what you see here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You get early access to our videos. You can vote on games we'll cover, lots of fun stuff. Also, check out our weekly podcast. We also have a streaming channel with even more good game content. And we have a Discord if you want to come by and have a chat. So the basic idea of Testament is that your team of four adventurers are trying to defeat a series of bosses as you work your way through this kind of mythical arc. And it's always going to be four characters, so you can play this with one to four player co-op. And you're first going to progress along this little track here. The tracker moves one space every round, and you can also move it yourself with some actions. And when it moves at the start of the turn, if it lands on a space with a number, you're going to spawn that many enemies on these spaces down at the bottom of the board. And each enemy is going to have a life value and they'll have some different activations they resolve. Like this guy's going to attack you three times for two damage each time. But your main goal is not necessarily defeating those enemies. They're just a distraction and they're going to hurt you. But you really want to get to the red space where you'll actually face off against the boss. And they're going to have their own unique AI cards that go on the spots here. They do different things to you each round. And you have to defeat them three times. One, two, three times you have to deal 12 damage to this storm causer, for example, uh, to win the stage, advance your characters again, and go on to the next one. And speaking of advancing your characters, here are two of my four-person team. They have six characters in the game. I'm using the four kind of basic ones. I've got Paul Set, who's themed as a wizard, and that's kind of her starting deck setup. But one of the cool things about the game is you can build the characters however you like. So here I've given her a movement ability and I've turned her into kind of a group healer instead of her normal role of shooting out fireballs and stuff. And then Holland, as you can probably tell from his armor and his picture, is usually the group tank, but I have made him the sorcerer because his base health is way higher than Paul Set's, so uh, he can kind of handle the damage from doing that better. But the key thing on the player side of the game are these ability cards. Each character generally gets four, and they start out at level one, but you'll be able to level them up as you go. After each stage, you get to move one of them up to level two and then up to level three, so you can kind of level up in whatever fashion you like. And very important, each card has this rank adjustment, like Cool Hunt has a zero value. And you add the values all together for a character. So in Paul Set's case, she's got zero, plus two, minus three, so that's a negative one, with initiate back to zero. And that's going to determine which rank card the character uses from one to five, which basically just gives them more health. So I kind of built Paul Set to be a bit stronger than she usually is because her health is generally low. She has 14 in this case because remember the sum of the values was zero and it says zero to two here. But to get to how a turn actually runs, the current first character will roll these force dice and they can roll souls like I just did, which is going to move this little track up. And when it gets to the end of the track, one of your characters can activate a huge super soul ability, which will send it all the way back down. But more commonly, you're going to roll stars. And looking at the bottom effects of ability cards, first of all, they'll always have an icon and a value. So this one can buff or debuff an enemy or an ally. But then they'll also have this empowering section, which shows how many times you can empower and how many stars it costs to do so. So for example, for this card, uh, if you had one star, you could empower it once. That's as much as you can do to buff or debuff two people instead of just one with this plus one here. And as cards get used, they get exhausted, turn 90 degrees, and each of the player characters gets to use an ability in order, then all the enemies attack, that's an entire round. But like games like Warhammer Adventure Card Game or Heroes of Terranoth, once you have exhausted your final card, you get all of them back. So you can try to plan out how you want to kind of go through them. Alternatively, a hero can take their entire turn to rest, in which case they get to unexhaust all of their cards. The final concept I want to look at, and this is familiar to any of those MMO players out there, is aggro. Many actions will give an aggro value, like this energy bolt is one. And characters are going to gain these aggro tokens for their abilities up to five, 
And generally speaking, the enemies will attack whichever of the heroes has the most aggro. So you can try to, you know, taunt and cover for each other, or sometimes things will go badly and your weeniest character will get <laughs> crushed by somebody. And by the way, just to go through my other characters quickly, Kukurito is usually themed as a kind of cleric healer but I've made him into a sort of support tank, and he's got quite a lot of health, 28. And Che, I've gone all in on, like, rogue kind of DPS insane melee machine. All she has is red melee cards that all combo off each other, but she builds a lot of aggro, and she has very low life, the lowest in my team. So it's going to be a lot of uh, healing and taunting enemies away from her to keep her punching them hard. All right, so that should be enough to go off of. We'll get into the details as we play, but let's jump into Testament. So first start of the turn is always to move this token, and oh my gosh, it's a five space. Level two is very tough. I've had trouble beating it because five enemies spawn right away. We've got a Metal Sniper, a Fire Drake, a Skeleton, a Big Mouth, an Acid Ooze. Ah, oh, this is just lovely. And oh my gosh, this is worse than I realized because the Metal Sniper, so each of these icons, again, is like an activation and ability they use from left to right. He has Stealth, this little shadow ability here, which means I can't attack him until everybody else is dead. And he has this ability, which means he boosts the attack of every other enemy for the rest of the round. So the fact that he was drawn first, oh, this is a bad beginning. Then we got a Fire Drake who breathes fire on literally everybody. I need to kill him. He has five life. Skeletons aren't too bad. The Big Mouth hits pretty hard, but also not too bad. The Acid Ooze also hits pretty bad. Yeah, so I'd say Fire Drake is my first priority. And if I could find some way to hit the Metal Sniper, that'd be beautiful, but probably not. Okay, for the next step, Pulsette is currently the first player, and she rolls nice. Three stars. And you can mark with the dice, or you have some extra stars here. Now she's got two healing abilities that combo with each other, but no reason to use that yet. And Cool Hunt with this little boot icon is a nice ability. It lets you move, which moves you onto a space without resolving it. But these key spaces don't summon any extra enemies. In fact, if we've defeated every enemy that is out when we get to one of these, we put a little damage token on the key, and it's an automatic damage to the boss in all three of its waves. So we don't want to uh, move past either of these. We want to move past like these things that are summoning three guys or all that kind of stuff. Which means she's definitely going to be using Initiate, which will let her buff or debuff some people. Holland's whole build is built around the one level three card he got, because we've already leveled up several times since we're on level two. This little icon here means that once you use this card, it adds an ability to the rest of your cards until you unexhaust it. In this case, it says damage you suffer from your own skills is reduced to zero. Because I built Holland to hurt himself in this build, so that'll help him out. So he wants to use that, but he can boost his damage without any stars, so he doesn't need any help from these. Kukurito has a similar ongoing ability he wants to play very early. This one is amazing. Brave Song is going to give us a bonus star and a bonus soul gain to get that big soul blast ability for every roll until it's unexhausted. And he'll also buff or debuff somebody, so... That's pretty good, and he lets any hero return a skill to the ready position. I don't think that's going to be too important. And then finally, Che just punches people and punches them some more and punches them again. The big thing is these three left cards boost the attack of every other red card that she uses, so she doesn't want to use Serpent Tail until the end. Rabbit Punch does less damage, but these ones give her aggro, and she'd probably get attacked, and she's our weakest person. So I think she's probably going to Rabbit Punch. And so I wanted to go through all this because you have to assign your stars before you do anything. I'm going to give two to Pulset and one to Che, and you'll see why as we go through the turn. So Pulset is first. We said she's going to initiate. So she can buff or debuff one person, and one time she can spend one star to add one to that value. But every character has a unique soul ability when your soul track gets filled. Additionally, some characters have other bonuses, like Pulset can empower one more time for her card each turn which means she can use both of these stars, make this a times two, and debuff or buff three people. And buffs for the heroes are super simple. They're just basically like stars that you can use to enhance your abilities, but they hang around from turn to turn because any stars you don't use just go away. Whereas for enemies, they're an ongoing debuff that just straight up takes away their leftmost activation, so they won't do that thing at all. Although anytime an enemy is healed, like the skeleton heals itself, it also gets rid of any debuffs on it. So for this turn, I'm really going to try to kill the Fire Drake. Besides that, I mean, yeah, I think four damage, that's pretty rough. And the Metal Sniper has three damage that pierces through defenses. And what the hey, Acid Ooze, you get weakened too. All right, that's it for Pulset. Now Holland, as planned, is going to use Chaos Flare. And up to three times, he can remove one aggro from himself and increase attack by one. I think he can do that if he has no aggro. So I'm just going to use that three times to get three attack here. Put that all on our friend, the Fire Drake. Fire against fire. 
Now, for Kukurito, I might actually change my mind. By the way, he has five starting skills because of his special ability. I was going to use Brave Song for the boost, but I'm worried about my weak people getting killed. So let's use Taunt instead, which gets him three aggro. And this text here is unfortunately the one misprint they have in the game, although it's really easy to remember. It's remove one aggro from anybody, not yourself, which makes a lot more thematic sense. You're protecting the other people by taking away their aggro and taking it on for yourself. Now you gain aggro first before you resolve abilities and abilities aren't optional. So I'm gonna have to remove one of the aggro for myself, but at least that leaves him at two. So he'll take some of the attention. And then finally, I wanted to do the rabbit punch and get no aggro, but that won't be enough to kill the fire drake. But if I use Grand Saber, she's gonna have two aggro, which ties her with Kukurito. And monsters intelligently <laughs> go against the lowest rank hero when aggro is tied. So they would try to kill little 10 life Che here instead of Kukurito. So even though it's a bit of a waste, I'm going to use her strongest skill, Gore Smash. It's going to give all other melee attacks plus two damage for the rest of the round, which is every skill she has. Uh, does three damage, only one aggro, so won't tie her with Kukurito. And she does have a star, which would give her plus one attack. Oh, at four damage, though. And uh, for zero stars, she can make damage not be lowered with shields. Enemies and allies can get shields. She doesn't need any of that, so I guess the star I gave her is kind of a waste. But she'll certainly kill that dragon and get one aggro. So the fire drake is murdered before it ever gets to go. All the other enemies, you can just slide them down to the left. In addition to moving the soul tracker when you roll the lightning bolt on the dice at the beginning of the round, you also move it whenever an enemy is defeated. So as you uh, beat up on mobs, you will level up. All right, here we go. This is going to hurt. The metal sniper's first action is skipped, but this combo action means everybody else gets plus one to all their attacks for the rest of the turn. Next, the skeleton attacks for two, added up to three, and then tries to heal itself for one, but nothing to heal. And then since Kukurito has more aggro, the three damage goes to him out of 28. But here's the part I forgot in my plan. Big Mouth's first action takes the person with the most aggro or characters with the most aggro if they're tied. And it takes away two, so messes up all my defenses. And that's going to attack for three plus one for the Metal Sniper. And the Acid Use is also going to do three plus one. So that's eight damage. And with Kukurito not guarding her anymore, guess where that eight damage is going? All on Che. Yeah, not a great plan there. But we survived. It's the end of the round. Holland will be first next time. And we bump on up to our first key space. We still have enemies, so we're not getting that free damage on the boss every fight round with them. But uh, at least we don't spawn anybody else. And, all right, Holland, roll them dice. So we got one soul race, and this is the best one. You get two stars, and you get to roll again. Okay, so two soul rays, two stars. Not bad, not bad. Let's see, there's a bunch of enemies with four life. Holland with one star can kill one of them, so he'll get one. Kukurito might try to do the Brave Song, although it's definitely even Che out to dry. I wish I had gotten more taunting abilities. I really set my team up a little bit weak there. Or actually, even though it's a little bit early, Pulsette can do her Divine Seal Healing Wave combo. You'll see how that works. She basically just heals a ton. Um, and I think she needs a star for that, so there we go. So Holland is going to do Pyrokinesis, which would deal three damage to an enemy, one aggro, and for one star, get plus one to so four damage, would suffer five damage normally, but Chaos Flare, remember, is protecting us from that. So boom, one aggro with him, still not enough to uh, take the attention away from Jay. Which of these four is the worst? I think the Big Mouth, right? All right then I think Kukurito is going to do the Brave Song, that will get him an aggro again, but it won't do anything else except set us up for better rolls in the future. And ooh, ooh, okay, here's what I'm gonna do with Che. I don't wanna get her more aggro, but Serpent Tail is perfect. Look, I remove one aggro, and I'm gonna do two damage, but plus two because Gore Smash is tapped. So that's gonna get rid of her one aggro so she's not the target anymore and straight up kill somebody. And the Acid Ooze is worse than the Skeleton. I'm feeling good so far. And then finally, Pulsette has a combo I mentioned. Let's show you. So Divine Seal would, first of all, remove all of her aggro. She doesn't have any. Then she gets to use another skill, and she gets one shield. And by the way, how shields work, most characters can build up to three of them. Uh, Holland can get four. Whenever you take damage, you can discard one shield and decrease the amount of damage by the number of shields you have. So it's better if you build them up, because if you have like four shields like Holland, a single shield will stop four damage. Whereas right now, if Paul said used her single shield, she would just stop one damage. But here's the really cool part about Divine Seal. It has this stuff about removing red, blue, and black tokens. Those are from the boss. We'll see those later. But it says you can use another skill, and if the other skill activated heals, it adds plus six healing. And I'm going to do healing wave with that. Targets all heroes for, that's right, two plus six, eight healing. Oh, she does get an aggro. Christ, is she going to get killed? Well, she's got a shield. It should be okay. But yeah, she just healing waved all of Che's damage and all of Kukurito's, so we are fresh and clean again. And man, oh man, this turn is much less nasty than the last one. A Metal Sniper boosts the skeleton's attack, and he does three damage. 
And though interesting, even though Paul Set has less life, uh, her and Hollander tied for aggro, and he's rank one, so he takes the damage because he's the lowest rank. It's just that he's so tough that it doesn't really hurt him as much. All right, and there we go. All right, we go to the second key space. We're not going to get any bonus damage on the boss. And next round, we're going to add three people. Then two, the fire behind the number means that it's an ambush, and the two people you add immediately attack, and then they don't attack at the end of the round. So it's kind of like they just do their attack early, which can really mess you up because you have no way to prepare for it. But let's not worry about that yet. Right now, we've got almost nobody tough to worry about. Kukurito is first, and the Brave Song is going to add one star and one soul to our roll which is three stars. So we'll have four stars and one soul. And along with our enemy destruction, we're looking pretty decent on souls, halfway to the big blast. And let's see, what are we gonna do this turn? I think Kukurito wants to heal. Che can kill the skeleton with just a basic rabbit punch because it's one damage plus four and won't increase her aggro. Well, Set could cool hunt to move us past the space that spawns three guys, but then we'd be right in front of the fire space with two, but it is fewer enemies, huh? I guess that would make sense. And then actually we won't need any extra damage because that will do one damage to the Metal Sniper. So we'll give Holland one star for his initiate that he's going to use. I think it makes sense for Kukurito to use a star as well. Che can definitely use one because her abilities just let her save a boost for later. And then sure, Paul said you have the last one. All right, so yeah, we don't need to heal yet. Kukurito will go ahead and initiate. And with the star, they'll give him two. And then for now, I'm just going to start throwing them on my characters. So let's go ahead and give both of them one each. Uh, they can generally hold two each, except Che can hold three. Speaking of Che, she's going to attack. And her one star lets her add a boost to herself. So that's one, three. Oh, it's only three damage. Ah, man, I miscounted. Well, you know what? That being the case, I'm actually going to use Grand Saber, give her two more aggro. I think it'll work out okay, though, and she'll still give herself a boost. That gets her up to four damage, so bye-bye skeletons. And now we need to kill this metal sniper before any other enemies spawn or he'll be protected again. But that's where Cool Hunt comes in. We didn't really look at this one too much. So you get to move one. You deal one damage to a mob. You can move around these boss tokens. Again, don't worry about those yet. And for one star, you can move an aggro to any hero. And that's the big thing. She's going to give Kukurito another one so that he might be able to protect Che. She's still tied with him, but if he can get one more on his next turn, we'll be okay. And we entirely skip this three space, although we'll be facing some pain here, potentially. And by the way, that was Paul Set's fourth ability, so everything is back. Nice, she's ready to do a big heal again. And finally, Holland's doing an initiate with a plus one. So he'll give Kukurito one and max out himself for a big energy ball attack next turn if he needs to. Oh, whoops, forgot to show it. The hunt killed off the metal sniper. We are four away from a soul boost. But before that happens, uh-oh, we got two enemies immediately attacking. Let's hope they're not devastating because Che is unguarded. Oh no, Acid is going to do five damage to her, two piercing through shield and three normal. Oh no, and the Screamer's going to hit everybody for two and then... Oh no, Che! Yeah, see, this is what happens when you don't really have a good tank for your group, or at least a good enough one. The Acid is doing two damage to Che because, again, she's tied for aggro with Kukurito and she has the lower rank. And then three more, that'll be five out of ten. The Screamer hits everybody for two, that's what the little diamond means. Then D buffs for one, so Che has to lose a shield or a buff token. And it does three more, so she is defeated! Ah! All of her tokens go away, all of her skills come back. Now she's down with 10 damage, but if we healed her, she would come back. Although her rank would be lowered by one, and you can see the problem when you're at rank one, you can't go any lower. So she cannot be revived right now. But don't worry, our man Kukurito's got us covered. We're really close to having our soul ability, and look, we can heal 15 damage to all heroes and revive all down heroes without paying the down penalty. Kind of a waste of the soul thing. Again, if I was playing and planning better, that wouldn't happen, but so it goes. All right, Che, you can still roll for force even though you are dead currently. Oh, man, we didn't roll any lightning bolts. What a bummer. This is not good. Now, the Brave Song's still going to give us plus one star and one soul, so we'll have three stars and one soul. So let's see, we're here. If we kill both of these enemies, we're only one away. So next turn, we'll be able to use the soul ability if we can defeat these guys. And what do we need to do that? Four damage each, huh? And without my main damage dealer, that seems a little tough. Well, let's see, Kukurito's definitely going to do Fortress and try to actually tank for once. Holland's going to shoot out an Energy Ball because he's the only one who can actually hurt anybody. And I think Paul Set's going to do another cool hunt, so... Uh, this is not, not great. All right, I guess I'll give Holland a star to uh, hurt his people more. And Kukurito can get the other two to let him get more uh, shields. But Paul Set's first, he's going to cool hunt, deal a damage to somebody. And it'll certainly be that Screamer, what a nightmare. We also skip past the three spot, but we're gonna have another one in a second. Ah, oh, this is not good. Holland's gonna use his energy bolt. He has one star, which is all he can use. 
He could add another target to do one damage to two different people, or do plus one damage and suffer damage, but that wouldn't hurt him here. Hmm. I mean, either way, these guys aren't going down, so maybe I spread the damage out and we can try to get him next turn. Yeah, I guess so. We have ways to deal two or three damage, right? It does put a Holland up to two in some danger, but Fortress, remember, that's the uh, misprint. Let's you remove one aggro, so we'll bring him back down to one, and Kakarito's gonna give himself two shields. And remember, these monsters already attacked. That was part of the ambush, so they'll just act at the end of the next round. After we summon three more guys, no! Let's roll for our dice. Come on, some souls. That's one so. Okay, so two souls, two stars with Kakarito's ability. So yeah, even one defeat will let us use a soul ability. And for the two stars, huh. I think Hollands is gonna Chaos Flare and kill off one of those guys. Oh wait, what am I doing? I forgot to meet our new friends. We got a metal worker who's also gonna boost everybody, but at least this time it's only two other people. A metal commander who's gonna heal everybody and take away debuffs. God, this is not good. And another screamer, oh my lord. Oh my gosh, we are so dead. We are so <laughs> dead. Uh, what is the best thing to do here? Holland can kill somebody. Uh, Kukurita's gonna need to heal everybody. So let's give Pulset all of the stars and have her try to debuff some of these worst guys. Cause yeah, if Kukurita's about to heal everybody, her little healing wave thing won't really make any sense. So. Initiate, uh, gonna be able to debuff three people with her plus one in power bonus. Oh, you can debuff the Screamer's crazy all attacks. So there's one. Definitely wanna get rid of the Metal Commander's healing or he'll just take away all the debuffs. And then, uh, Holland's gonna kill the Screamer. I guess uh, the Acid Ooze is the one I need to worry about. All right, so I feel a little better with that now. All right, as for Holland, he's gonna set up his Chaos Flare and he'll get rid of all of his aggro and get plus three attack. More than enough to kill the Screamer, which gets us the last soul we need. Oh no, but I just realized I made a big mistake. Because <laughs> when somebody rests, in addition to getting all of their abilities back and being able to use a soul ability like Kukurito's healing one, they lose two aggro. Which means, guess who would be target number one for the 85 billion attacks coming? Oh, why can't I play? <laughs> so I guess, oh my gosh, I guess he's gonna just heal and get all his abilities back that way and get another aggro. And wait until theoretically more of these people are dead? I don't know. But hey, Holland, at least you're feeling better, buddy. <laughs> this is gonna be a playthrough where I don't even reach the boss. Lord help me. Okay, Acid is gonna hit Kukurita for three. Metalwork is gonna hit him for two, boost everybody else. Metal Commander's gonna take away almost all his aggro, then hit him for five with the boost. And then he's gonna lose a buff or a shield and take four more, gosh. So it's 14 damage coming at him overall, half of his life. I did use uh, his two shields, a block two and then one, so that's gonna get it down to 11. The one guy will steal his buff. This is just terrible. And oh ho oh, oh, ho, lest you think the bleeding has stopped, we have to spawn two guys with ambush. Now there's both lucky and unlucky for us because we only have space for one enemy. There can only be five. So only one guy's gonna ambush us, no. No, don't do that. Don't heal everybody of their debuff. Are you... <laughs> God. Oh, this play is a wreck. But whenever you can't add an enemy for each enemy you can't add, you deal damage to every character equal to the current state. So two damage to everybody. Well, I guess two damage to everybody except Che. So, hey, congratulations. Oh man, this is bad. All right, and the Watcher immediately activates. All of these guys are healed. Oh, and the Acid Ooze loses its one damage, great. Then he takes away Kukurita's last aggro, so he's not guarding anybody, and does two damage to Holland, our lowest ranked guy. He had two, so now he's at four. I guess uh, that could have been worse. All right, give me some dice, come on. Uh, okay, soul that I can't use, and two stars. We don't have the Brave Song boost right now. All right, well, Holland definitely needs one star for Pyrokinesis to kill one of the guys. Kukurito, I guess, is gonna rest, but then we're still in the same situation. Oh, wait, wait, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm dumb. I totally forgot. Holland is rank one, two. So if he and Che are tied, I get to choose for each attack which one takes it. Oh man, I probably could have brought her back a turn ago and actually been killing people. Oh man, I wish I remember that earlier. But yeah, I don't think I have a use for this other star, unfortunately, huh? All right, so Holland, go ahead and Pyrokinesis with a boost. Oh, you're gonna get an aggro. You're gonna get killed, aren't you? That means he's doing four damage. And because Chaos Flare is active, not suffering any. And yeah, I think I need to hit the Screamer that hits us all because with the Metal Worker, I'd be taking plus one damage on each of those. All right, Kukurito's gonna spend all of our souls and rest for no effect except to heal himself, heal everybody, and yay, Che's back, but you can't act this turn. And Balsek can heal people for nothing. <laughs> uh, I guess she'll just rest and get her skills back. I did not build these characters well. I am sorry, everybody. 
And the enemies are not going to let me get away with it. Two damage to Holland, five damage to Holland, seven damage, plus one to everybody else. Are they even going to survive? That does nothing. That takes away his aggro. So now I can split it between him and Che. So since he's got seven, I'll have the five from the Metal Commander go on Che. But then the Watcher's going to hit Holland for three more. All right, so beautiful. Holland's got six life left. Che's got five. We're alive for a second. Because, oh no, the boss is coming with three guys to help him. <laughs> which means we're going to spawn one enemy. Oh, it's a Lamia, which is ridiculous. Debuff everyone for two, then attack for three, then exhaust one person's ability card. And if your fourth ability card gets exhausted, you have to rest on your turn. You can't even do an action. And then two couldn't be spawned, so that's four damage to everybody. Che and Holland have like one or two life left. And wait a second, who are we here to fight? All right, Blue Whale of Death. Uh, cool, so you draw four out of the eight behavior cards. Four of them are common that all the bosses use, but they increase uh, in power with the level of the stage. But the other four are unique to the boss. And you order them by number. So two, the two here just means the stage. So the three is what you're looking at. Three, six, seven. And one pawn marks which life we're on for the boss. By the way, they're going to spawn three more guys every time we defeat them which I don't think we'll even defeat them once. And <laughs> this marks which action they're on. They're going to go from card to card. If we haven't defeated them by the fifth turn, then uh, that is it. We lose automatically. If we haven't defeated them by round four, the cycle repeats. They go through all four cards again. If we haven't defeated them by <laughs> round eight, we die. So bosses have their own activations. This is a common one here. You would take away our aggro. We love that. Uh, deal X plus one, X is the stage number, so that's three damage, and heal himself for two life. Awesome. You know what? I ain't scared, because Che is back. She's gonna mess people up. Uh, <laughs> okay, we got a soul, two stars and a reroll, four stars and a reroll. Okay, two souls, four stars. That's cool. So I'm pretty sure if Kukurito doesn't taunt, we'll just all die. Although, oh man, does he have to remove it from himself again because nobody else went? No! And Che, how can you do, Che? Maybe like a rabbit punch to knock in the aggro but start building up damage? Pulsette is without a doubt going to do her little healing wave combo and heal all of us almost fully, so she can definitely use some of those four stars. Yeah, I think if we give her two of them, she will heal us 100%. And Holland, really, all you can do is one energy bolt? <laughs> oh, no. Well, it is what it is. You can have a star. Yeah, I mean, gosh. I mean, whatever. I think she has to go for Gore Smash and just, like, try to kill somebody, <laughs> I guess. Oh, actually, wait, wait, hold on. Brave summons me return a skill of another hero to a ready position, so I can get Holland to, uh, to at least do Pyrokinesis and kill somebody, yes. So yeah, we'll do that, and have Holland ready Pyrokinesis, there we go. Brave Song has a buff or debuff. Who to do it to? Maybe the Watcher? Because I think I can kill the Metal Commander this turn, so sure. And then Che's gonna do a Gore Smash... So that's three damage and an aggro. And yeah, I should put it on the Metal Commander. Well, Seth's gonna get an aggro doing Divine Seal into Healing Wave, and she's gonna give it plus 12 healing, so that is 14 to everybody. Yeah, everyone is fully healed. That little combo there is like the one good thing in my life, and now she can't use it next turn. All right, Holland can do four damage, although I guess I only need uh, three of it. And he'll defeat the Metal Commander, yay! All right now, the dumb thing is everybody has one aggro. How is that helpful to me? So it's going to be Che and Holland just getting whooped again. The Acidus is going to do 5 damage to one of them, we'll say it's Holland. The Metal Worker is going to do 2 damage and boost, we'll say that's on Che. The Watch is going to take away all of their aggro because it hits everyone that's tied. And then 2 damage, we'll put it on Holland again. The Lamia debuffs everybody too. The only ones that have anything to debuff are Holland and Balset. And then it's doing 4 damage, wait did I do 3 with the Watcher? I think I missed one on Holland. But I'll have her attack Che for four. And one nice thing is she's going to tap one of Che's cards, and now Grand Saber gives her plus two to all of her melee attacks. So her Rabbit Punch will do five damage, and then her Serpent Tail would do, what, eight? Assuming I can get it off. And then the boss takes away our aggro, which says nothing. He hits us for three. That'll go on Holland. And he heals himself. That's also nothing. We survived! But next round we get to the boss-specific cards. So this would make everyone tap one card, or if he was debuffed, just one person would tap two. And then for each target, if they have none of the boss tokens, they add a red one. And you've seen these tokens reference, what do they do? For every black token a character has when they're healed, they heal that much less. Uh, red tokens, you put it on a skill, and that skill is nullified. So it basically takes out your ability cards. And blue, whenever you deal damage to the mobs or the boss, the mobs are the regular enemies, you take that much damage as well. And then it'll do Seahorse, two piercing damage to every hero, adding a black to them, the one that decreases their healing. 
and then five damage to the person with the most aggro. Remove all blue tokens from the target and deal three damage for each removed. Well, that one at least is not bad because we wouldn't have any blue. But still, that is a uh, not great turn. But let's roll those dice and we have the Brave Song bonus. Wow. Okay, so that'll be uh, one star and three souls. I think I got the soul for killing the Metal Commander. Actually, no, I don't think I did. So we're getting close to another soul action. All right, let's see. I think I'm going to give uh, Holland the star here. Okay, Jay's going to go first, do a rabbit punch with no aggro. Thank God for that. Doing one, three, five damage. So you know what? Let's just use all of it and deal five to the Lamia. Because every time we deal the full 12 to the boss, it does skip their attack for that turn. But they're going to spawn three guys again when they refresh for the next phase. So, oh, I want that. As we Paul said, honestly, I think I'm just going to have her rest and uh, get ready to heal again. Holland's going to get an aggro, currently the only one on the team. And he can deal two damage to one person or one damage to two. Jeez, I really don't know. All these guys are the worst. I guess maybe the acid ooze, he's doing the most damage. Actually, no, you know what? Forget that. Let's use initiate and debuff both of these guys. I think it's going to be more effective for our long-term survival than just doing a little piddly damage to him. And Kukuri is going to finally kind of do his job and get two aggro from taunting, and that's it. So the Acid is going to hit him for three. Metal Worker just boosts the other people. Watch is going to take away one of his two aggro and hit him for three as well. So that's six. And then the boss, oh my gosh, <laughs> is going to tap one card of every person. And he's going to give them all one of their skills being nullified. You know what? The Metal Worker's two damage doesn't seem too bad anymore. Let's debuff that thing. <laughs> so Kukurita took two more damage. And now this ability is just going to hit Kukurita. I guess... He doesn't need to have Initiate 2, so that can get tapped. And we'll put the red on that one, so we can't really do anything with that anymore. Okay, then we all take two piercing damage. No. And we all get a black, which increases our healing. And then Kukurita is going to take five more damage. See how both set is pretty okay, but this is a bloody board. Ah, oh, there's no chance, man. So what's the guy doing next? He's going to attack the person with the current first player token for four damage. Or if we debuff him, just two damage. Then he's going to debuff all of us and heal everybody, which means we get rid of all the debuff tokens. No. All right, let's see what Pulse Set rolls. Wow, okay, three soul, huh? Well, that is interesting. Maybe we still have a chance? Because Pulse Set's soul ability is great. Deal four damage to all mobs, but not the boss. Now, you don't get souls for killing them, but, I mean, who cares, man? If I could, like, hurt the boss a bunch, leave the enemies here, just survive them, and then use that on the next turn, that would seem pretty good. We have no stars this turn. That's a really tough thing. Oh no, with no stars. Oh no, I can't use the boost for healing wave. No, 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 we are so dead. And she's first, so I can't even have somebody else use like initiate to help her out. Wait, 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 Brave Song is still active. Okay, we do get one star. Thank God. Yeah, so she's definitely doing her divine seal healing wave. Heal everybody for eight. She does get one aggro. And it's actually only for seven because they all have a black token. Seven's not really enough for me to feel like Holland's gonna survive. Whatever, whatever, it's fine. Okay, Holland's gonna use Energy Bolt. <laughs> Just do one damage to somebody. I guess, oh man, but then he's definitely gonna be a target. Yes, you know what, he'll just rest. I'd rather do that than give him the aggro. Kukurito, I think, is gonna heal Holland. That'll get him another aggro, so it'll target him, hopefully. And then Shay's the only one who's gonna be useful this turn. She's gonna do Serpent Tail with plus six, so eight damage. And we're just putting on the boss, whatever. There you go, buddy. We're gonna defeat him at least once. Or I should say maybe we are. Okay, the Acid Ooze uh, is all on Kukurito, so that's three damage, five damage. And then suddenly uh, Paul Set becomes the target because she has uh, has the same aggro. So this guy's going to do three damage to her. And then what's the boss doing? He's hitting Paul Set because she's the leader for four more. He's debuffing all of us, but none of us have anything. And then this is the rough part. He's healing everybody for one, which means all of these debuffs are gone and he's back to seven life. Oh man, we're still alive. But Kukurita's at about half. Paul Set's also at half. Roll this thing. Okay, so that actually gets us above where we need to be, and two stars with the bonus. There we go. So Paul Set can blast all the mobs with her abilities. We just need to hit the guy hard enough. What do we need to do? Five damage. Okay, Chaos Flare with the boost. Oh, and I can actually remove the boss's token. So okay, let's give him one star towards that, I guess. So that'll be uh, three damage. His one black token will go away. That gets the boss to 10 out of 12. We just need two more. Uh, is going to do Fortress. He'll take away Paul Set's aggro and get a shield for himself. I only need two more damage. If I do Grand Saver, she will be target number one and get murdered by everybody. So I guess I gotta do Serpent Tail, just do two damage and that's it to take him down. So boom, 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 the boss is gonna get some new AI cards. We're gonna restart from one. Spawn three more enemies, take some bonus damage because we can't spawn them all. But yeah, with that in mind, no way is Paul Set going to uh, use her big soul action yet. I guess she'll just initiate. 
Oh, and that could be our last star. I never assigned it. Oh, good thing because you don't check if the boss is uh, dead until their turn starts. So let's uh, stop the Watcher from healing him. That seems smart. Well, that does mean Kakariko is taking five, seven, and then the last two will go to one of our friends. We'll put it on uh, Holland, I guess. But all right, we make it to the second phase. And you take the four boss cards you didn't use and put them out in order. And then for the final phase, you always use just the boss-specific cards. So only like the really weird, nasty ones. We're also summoning three guys. A noisy minion. He's not too bad except for the boost. And a spore fungus with piercing damage everyone, would debuff everyone, hit you. And we can't fit one of the three enemies. Yes, it was definitely putting us uh, in a dangerous spot. But we got Paul set to blast them all. I feel really good about that. Ah, two souls. I don't need that. I'm not getting any stars. Dang it. All right, so since all the minions will basically be dead, all we care about is kill, kill, kill. Well, and some healing, maybe. Although Paul set can do her super heal in a second, so maybe I just get Brave Song set up. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. See, if I debuff the boss, he gets one shield instead of two. I mean, who cares? So let's give it to Paul Set to make sure her healing is really good next time. All right, next is Che to start punching the boss. Uh, you'll do one damage this time. Paul Set is going to rest and use her soul ability. So that is four damage to every mob, which just means the noisy minion is left with one, but Holland's going to take care of him in just a second. Wow, this is the first time the board has been clean in a while. And speaking of Holland, he'll just use an energy bolt and one aggro and take care of the guy nice and easy. And that one does earn us a soul. Nice. So all you gotta worry about is the boss for the second phase. So you get two shields. You give three blue to the highest ranked hero. So Kukurito is going to be a little bit messed up. Ah, I forgot he summons guys. He's gonna summon a healing core. The healing core will have a black on it, the one that uh, lowers healing. And then if you hit it, <laughs> then you take the black token. And then he's going to hit Kukurito for five. He will have one life left. And nullify another one of his skills? Jeez. And by the way, shields for enemies, they always use the max amount. So he'll block two damage, then he'll block one damage whenever he gets attacked. And just to show you the healing core, a lot of bosses have unique uh, units that are just for them. Three life, and it adds shields to itself, and then heals everybody for two. So yeah, pretty annoying little guy there. All right, Che's up. We got the Brave Song bonus. Come on, Che, roll a ton of stars. Okay, so we got three stars, one soul with Brave Song. It'll be a while before we get that up again. And gosh, I think I just want to, like, give almost all the stars. She can use up to four stars. How much could she heal? It's plus six for each star. So that'd be two, eight, uh, 14, 20. I mean, Kukurito needs all of that. So we'll definitely give her at least two stars. We'll see if anybody else needs a third one. Holland's doing pyrokinesis. That can take out the healing core all by itself. And then Che's probably going to do gore smash and hit the boss even more. So yeah, that seems pretty good. Ooh! Damage cannot be lowered with shields, so she's just going to go straight through the shield. That is awesome. Say, so, yeah, you know what? Whatever. Heal everything, Paul said. <laughs> so yeah, Chase first. We'll get her an aggro. That might be a problem, but she's going to do five damage, ignoring shields on the boss. Which gets him pretty close to the third wave. Okay, and then Paul said's going to do her little combo. Does give her an aggro as well. But she's got three stars, so that's 20 healing. That certainly heals everyone fully, except Kukurito. He's got uh, seven left. Oh, wait, I forgot the black token. Kukurito actually has one more. Then Holland's gonna pyrokinesis the healing core. Gets him to two aggro though, darn. Finally, Kukurito, I think you should taunt. Yeah, Cause I don't want Holland to get hit that much. So uh, we'll have him taunt. We'll take one aggro away from Holland. So everyone's at one and Kukurito's at five, the max he can have. That seems much better. All right, let's see. Oh my gosh, the boss gets three more shields. Yeah, that, that could be it right there. And then he summons two guys. So the whole summoning thing means Pit Snake. Only one life. Uh, he has stealth though, and a blood sucker. Only three life. They're easy guys to kill, but oh man. And then he heals one. Get out of here. Yeah, I think we're losing this battle of attrition. Okay, four star. No, five stars and uh, one of soul. Let's see, I'm gonna give two of the stars to Che. That'll let her kill the blood sucker. Give one to Cucurito to heal us a bit, I guess. And then one to Holland and one to Palset. She's gonna do a cool hunt to do one damage, and if she spends one star, she can ignore stealth. So the pit snake goes away. Holland's gonna use initiate. Actually, anyway, I don't think I'm gonna kill the blood sucker. I just don't have time. It doesn't do that much damage anyway, so let's do that. And we'll also debuff the boss's action, because the first one on there is terrible. Cougarito can heal somebody for six. I guess he'll heal himself for the one be five with that negative ability. Let's see, can she actually get through the boss's shields instead of attacking the blood sucker? It's two, four, six. Uh, with two stars, she can boost it to seven. So she'll get two damage through and take away a shield. I guess it's worth it. That was basically the best I had. So the Bloodsucker hits everybody for one damage twice. 
And then the boss is going to hit Kukurito for four and give him another anti-healing thing. He's going to summon a healing core and add one. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. I think I just realized, does this mean that you summon two guys and a healing core? Is this one would have been summon one and a healing core? <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to call it because I don't think I would be, oh my gosh, surviving this and where's the healing core? And that. I definitely don't have another big bomb. But still, hopefully this was a fun playthrough to watch. Mike in Agony. Definitely an example of something I'm going to talk about in my review, which is that it's super cool to build your characters out, but you can also do it in a really stupid way. And man, did I not have enough aggro. I didn't have enough consistent damage, like just these two spells. And that, that's like all the damage I can deal. Uh, definitely some poor building choices on my part. So we'll try to do better next time. But thanks for watching, everybody. Check out the separate review link that just popped up if you want to hear what I think about the game. And we'll see you at the next stop.